682 pounds. His record a perfect one, two bouts, two victories. Both of his wins come in by way of knockouts. Hailing from Beijing, China, ladies and gentlemen, presenting the undefeated Taishan. The referee in charge here to give instructions is Ray Corona. Two seconds. This is good right here. This is good right here. Listen to my commands. Touch gloves. God bless. Mr. Russell. Where well, here we go. As you take a look at just how big Tyshawn is. Oh. Again, seven. <laughs> I don't know if I've ever seen a guy with that long or big of a reach. I mean, then again, you rarely see a guy with this tall as well. So, again, we want to see the progression, though. You know, it's a matter of uh, is he going to continue to show the ability Ready? little by little Ready? each fight and get better so he can move on to contention later on. Well, he's got a new trainer, Buddy McGurk. Size of Tyshawn, which has intimidated his first two opponents. He said this is the reason why he took the fight. He felt like he's too big, too awkward, and that he was going to use his skill and ability to win this fight. We'll see. There's a stiff jab by Tyshawn. And he does look a lot more in control from when we saw him in his debut. Yeah, yeah. He looks like he has at least a sense of wanting to measure his distance. You know, the thing about being that tall, it can be an advantage if you know how to use it, but it can be a disadvantage if you don't know how to use it. You know, proper punching distance is, is important. So when you're that tall, you have to punch from a little bit further away to maximize your leverage. And there's a pretty good right hand there. Starting to touch the curve. And I like the way he's using that jab to, me to measure that. He's improved his balance. not bringing his right hand back. Learn more about sitting down on his punches, being more accurate. Here's a left hook by McCreary. He had thrown that as a, as a trainer. I heard the trainer from the corner yelling at him, saying, Tyshawn's not bringing his right hand back. McCreary listening to the left hook. Here's a big right hand. McCreary's doing a pretty good job of moving his head and getting out of the way of those big right hands. McCreary's 42 out of Memphis. There's another right hand that backs up McCreary. As we hit 20 seconds now left here in round one. you by Corona Extra, La Cerveza Masfina, O'Reilly Auto Parts, better parts, better prices every day, and Mexico, live it to believe it. The third member of our broadcast team, the talented Jessica Rosales joins us now. Jessica? Hey, Brian. Now, it is a bittersweet night for Randy Caballero, the IBF bantamweight champ. Should have had his first title defense here tonight scheduled as the main event, but he had to withdraw from that due to an injury to his right ankle, and now he's preparing for surgery on Wednesday. He's here tonight and told me that he's had a constant pain in his ankle, but it really intensified during this last training camp where he did not feel 100% confident going into the ring. He had to go to a doctor, followed up with an MRI, and was told he will be having that surgery on Wednesday. It'll be three to four months before he can train again. He said right now his health is his number one priority. All right, Jess, thank you very much. Randy Caballero. Prairie unloads an overhand right and connects. Caballero in the house tonight. He'll join us a little later on in the broadcast. Here's another right hand by McCreary. Took up boxing. Not ready, hurt him. Not ready, hurt him. Take the time. 
about five years ago, full time. Said he sparred Seam Rockman. Hey man, he's, he's a bit overweight, obviously. Uh, got the tie around the belly, but you know, he is, he is seeing a lot of Tyshawn's offense, and Tyshawn is having, a, having trouble landing as cleanly as he'd like to. So he's getting hit on the shoulders and on the sides, but he's not he's not able to get Tyshawn not able to cut the curry the way he wants to. And you know what? If he keeps winging these big shots, he may get a little bit tired, so it'll be interesting. See if McCurry can create anything off of that, though. Which is a different question. Well, one of the things Tyshawn told us is that not only working on his distance, but utilize his jab a lot more and to go to the body some. But then he said he hadn't really done it in his first two fights. Yeah, which it can be kind of tricky for a guy who's seven feet tall yeah. because you got to give up your height to go to the body a little bit. So you can't just do it recklessly. This is the second round. Tyshawn in those gold trunks. Look at on, Roy McCrary. There you go. Blurry now. Trying to utilize his jab. Time at that, around the top. I'd like to see Tyshawn use some of those feints. See McCurry use some feints. I'd like to see Tyshawn use some of those feints. Oh. This one right here now. There was a left to the body. McCurry. There was a left hook. As Tyshawn will uh, we'll start to develop a little bit more, you're going to start. Oh, right hand. And McCurry's knee touches. In seconds. Except Tyshawn was able to lane cleanly. He was lane clean there, though. Yes, he did. McCrary comes back at the end of the round. Tyshawn able to land a good shot in the last round. As McCrary was kind of trying to change the angle a little bit, it was an awkward shot. But uh, you saw Tyshawn use a kind of lead left hook to push McCrary into his right hand. And uh, that way he was able to set the trap and land, and land a pretty good right hand and cause a knockdown. This is the third round. We're going for Tyshawn is three rounds. He's covered well. He's been fighting the whole way. Good opponent for Tyshawn. He's making him think a little bit too, you know? Tyshawn not even weighing just anything he wants to. He's going to have to think his way through. Well, McCrary's a guy who's not been knocked out at all. <laughs> you see why? He's got the, some crafty moves. Yeah. Right? And when you do hit him, he does take a pretty good shot. Punch was smothered and he still was able to score knockdown. And McCrary this time did get up on wobbly legs. Let's see how much of the legs he has left there. We got about 70 seconds or 80 seconds here left in this round. There's a left hook by Tyshawn. Rary has been down twice in this fight. Under a minute. Left hook by McCrary. 
both throwing a little, starting to throw a little bit wider shots. You see Tyshawn is in a little bit better form. And of course he goes back to the basics with, uh, of the jab, which you always like to see a fighter at least. Here's that, that's a big right hand, yeah. Tyshawn doesn't at least lose those fundamentals. He goes back to that jab all the time. Kind of reset himself, and you like to see that. Coming up, the fourth and final round. Tyshawn's able to score another knockdown in that last round, and there's a shot. See, he wasn't able to land cleanly, but it was behind the ear. And a lot of times that affects your equilibrium. And uh, that right hand, even though it was a little bit smothered, I'm going to show you just how strong Tyshawn is. He was able to land it behind the ear and still uh, cause enough force to get the knockdown. Fourth final round for these heavyweights. Tyshawn out of China. McCreary. This is a good, good, good fight, good lesson here for Tyshawn, huh? Yeah, as I said last round, you know, it's a good opponent for Tyshawn. You know, he's crafty. He's making Tyshawn think. He's not just going to hand you the knockout on a platter. He's not going to hand you the big shot on a platter. You know, he's, he's, he's a little bit slick, even though uh, he's a little bit uh, on the rotund side. You know? <laughs> <laughs> to be nice, huh? <laughs> Road work wasn't part of the priority of the camp. No. <laughs> A bit of blood there on the left cheek of Tyshawn. He's got a slow cut. Under two minutes left in this fight. He could have let that one go. Huh? He did. He's letting him go, but he's wide open when he does. Tyshawn's looking on the shoulder there, though. I'll tell you, and to get inside that distance of Tyshawn, because Tyshawn used that jab well. And he, I like the way he uses it defensively as well. You know, if you brush in, he'll just stick out his jab. Again, it's, it's good fundamentals to have. You can add to that. Some good things he's been working on in the gym. He's giving a lot of that credit. Here's a right hand by McCurry. Buddy McGurk. Yeah, obviously, it's yeah, something they work on in the gym and keep those fundamentals down back. Another left hook by McCreary. We go under a minute, and another left hook. McCreary's been able to land some good shots this round. Last time McCreary's even tasted victory was June 2013. So it's been quite a while. Almost two years ago. Where is a former football player, played in college, played professional, played in the Arena League. Step to him, step to him. One, two. still trying. Last 10 seconds here, this fight. I shot another stiff jab. He misses with that right hand. the fight. Good choice of opponent. Mm -hmm. Match very well. Yeah, I mean, this is the kind of fight where Tyshawn can go back to the gym. He can learn. You know, he got some rounds in. He had to think his way through the fight, but it's a fight that he's going to win. And so, well, that, that's the best kind of thing. You know, you get a, a, an opponent where your, your prospect can learn, get better from, get rounds from it, and uh, that way you got some stuff to work on in the gym. You know exactly what you got to work on in the gym for next time. Well, when you look at the heavyweight division, you know, Tyshawn is one who's gotten a lot of media attention, national attention. CNN did a piece on him. He's gotten a lot of uh, recognition and articles written about him and some of the boxing publications just because of the size, the reach, and things of, of that nature. Of course, anytime you got a fighter that size, you're always going to draw that curiosity. We need a little re recap from the fight. You know, McCreary made himself presence in there, at least for Tyshawn. You know, he was throwing wide shots, but Tyshawn, obviously the better fundamentals. You know, a little bit too much in the bag for him at the end of the day, but again, McCrary, enough to make Tyshawn think. Tyshawn there, will not set him up nice for that knockdown. He threw that lead left hook, which kind of pushed McCrary into the path of the oncoming right hand. So it was nice, nicely set up knockdown. 
set. The next round shows you a little bit of a glimpse of Kaishan's power where he's not even landing cleanly and not even getting the full distance on the right hand, but he was still able to land it with enough force despite being smothered. So he had a knockdown. As we took it, the look, take a look at the final punch stats. Kaishan landed just 20% of his punches and McGrary 24%. Daishan landed 43, threw over 200. McQuarrie over 130, he landed 32 of those punches. Next step for Taishan. Hey, you just keep seeing him, uh, try to keep improving. You know, these are the kind of points he needs. Guys that can uh, make him think in the last few rounds and, uh, you know, hopefully he can continue to develop up the ladder. And he can be entertaining. He will always be curious. Well, let's find out who won this fight. The judge's official decision is in. Here's Ray Flores. Ladies and gentlemen, after four rounds, we go to the scorecards. Here are your score totals. Judge Pat Russell has it about 39, 35. And judges Fritz Werner and Pat McConnelly are in accordance. 40, 34, all for your winner by unanimous decision. And still undefeated, Tyshawn! Well, no surprise, Tyshawn gets the unanimous decision. Now 3-0. First time for him going the distance. Yep, and all, it's all an experience. All an experience. And we're just getting started. Coming up, our co-main feature, Oscar De La Hoya's cousin, Diego De La Hoya, next on Golden Boy Live. You wanted more endless apps? We made them.